So you were thinking of moving to Barrie, Ontario, and you want to find out some of the pros and the cons, the good and the bad. Well, keep watching to find out more. I'm James Myers, and this is your YouTube channel for real estate information in the city of Barrie, Ontario. If you are new to the channel, and this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button down below the video and tap the bell icon right beside the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. Barrie is a medium-sized city located about an hour north of Toronto and the population of the city itself within the city limits is around 150,000 people. And then there are another 75 to 100,000 people in the surrounding communities of Innisfil, Essa, Springwater and Ormodonte, bringing the total population of the Barrie area to around 250,000 people. This area is very popular with people from south of here, Toronto, Brampton, Mississauga, York Region, the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. We get a ton of people moving to Barrie from there, but we don't hear about too many people who want to move back to Toronto, the GTA, from Barrie. I wonder why. Hmm. I'll start off with a pro. Number one, Kempapelt Bay. One of the biggest draws to the city of Barrie is Kempapelt Bay, which is the body of water that the city is built around. Kempapelt Bay is part of the larger Lake Simcoe, which is in turn part of the Trent Severn Waterway. So you could launch your boat in Barrie, go out Kempapelt Bay into Lake Simcoe and onto the Trent Severn Waterway and boat all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. You could go to Nova Scotia by boat if you really wanted to. Small benefit. Really, the biggest draw of Kempapelt Bay and Barrie is the beaches. There are four beaches that are maintained by the city of Barrie. Centennial Beach is the main beach and it is right in the center of everything. There's a big playground for kids, there's a boardwalk, there's a concession stand to buy food at, and there's new washrooms. It is the most popular beach in Barrie. There are also three other smaller beaches. There's Johnson's Beach, Tyndale Park Beach, and Minutes Point Park Beach. They all have plenty of parking and decent washrooms. In the winter, the bay freezes and you can go out on the ice. People go out there on snowmobiles, ATVs, ice fishing, or you can just go out there for a walk. It's not unusual to see a couple hundred people out on the ice on a cold Saturday afternoon in February. Some people even drive their cars out onto the ice. Yeah, that's my truck that was out on the ice a few years ago. I was driving down the road one day, saw a bunch of vehicles on the ice, so I headed to the boat ramp and I drove out there. It gets your heart racing a little bit when you first drive out on the ice, but I had been out there earlier in the week and I stuck my arm in an ice fishing hole and the ice was up to my elbow. So I knew it was thick enough to hold me. You can't do this every year, so drive out there at your own risk. Pro number two, housing. Another pro of living in Barrie is reasonably priced housing. Now, when I tell you these numbers, I'm comparing Barrie to areas south of here, like Toronto, York Region, and Peel Region. The average price for a detached house in Barrie is around $800,000, and that is less than half of what a detached property sells for in Toronto. The latest statistics say to buy a typical detached property in Toronto is going to set you back around $1.75 million. In York Region and Peel Region, you're looking at around a million and a half. So compared to those areas, yes, Barrie is very reasonable. You can get a detached house in Barrie for about half of what you would pay south of here. And you're going to get a bigger lot too. For a condominium in Barrie, you're going to need to spend around half a million, $500,000. And to get a comparable condo south of here in the GTA, you're going to have to spend around $300,000 more. Pro number three, we are close to cottage country. We are about 45 minutes from Gravenhurst, which is in the lower end of Muskoka. In fact, you won't have to drive much more than an hour or so to be right in the heart of cottage country. There are the Corthas and Halliburton to the northeast of Barrie, and then to the northwest of Barrie, there's Georgian Bay. We are about half an hour from Wasega Beach. So imagine, if you lived in Barrie, in 30 minutes, you could be swimming on the longest freshwater beach in the world. If you lived in Toronto and you wanted to go to Cottage Country for the weekend, you'd have to fight the traffic northbound through Barrie on Friday afternoon, and then on Sunday evening, you'd have to do the same thing again, going southbound back down to Toronto, fight the Sunday afternoon traffic. The trip from Toronto to Barrie or from Barrie to Toronto would probably take you two hours, an hour longer than it normally would. Since you've watched this far into the video, you must be getting value from it. So why don't you just take two seconds right now and tap the like button down below the video. I'll wait. Pro number four, we are close to Toronto. I know I've been railing on Toronto a lot in this video. I wouldn't want to live there, but it's a nice place to visit for short periods. 
they got a lot of good stuff down there. You got your professional sports teams, the Raptors, the Blue Jays, the Toronto Maple Leafs, if you can afford the tickets. Then you have the tourist attractions like the CN Tower, Ontario Science Centre, Canada's Wonderland, which is actually a little bit north of Toronto in Vaughan. One thing they have down there that we don't have in Barrie, and personally, I don't really care about this, but they have Ikea stores. We don't have an Ikea store in Barrie. So if you want to go to Ikea, you have to head south down to Toronto, or you can go to the one in Vaughan. If you commute to a job or you have family that still lives in Toronto, it is just an hour away. There is Go Train service, which is very popular with commuters, and there are quite a few options for departure time. You can get on the train at one of the two GO stations in Barrie, the Allendale Waterfront Station or the Barrie South Station. And then 90 minutes later, you're all relaxed in downtown Toronto. If you can work your schedule, your work schedule around the GO trains, it's an excellent way to commute to Toronto. Or you can drive up and down Highway 400 every day, which is what the majority of commuters do. I'll move on to the cons now. Anywhere you live, there's going to be things you don't like. Con number one, snow. Probably the biggest con you will experience when you live in Barrie is the amount of snow we get. If you are moving up from south of here, you are going to notice a big difference in the winter time. And depending on how much you like your outdoor winter exercise, you may want to invest in a snowblower. I went years without a snowblower and then one particularly bad January around 15 years ago, I shoveled snow every day. After that, I put $100 a month away until about September or October and I bought a snowblower and I have never been with that one since then and I never will. We can have a good year for snow or we can have a bad year. This past winter 2021 wasn't too bad. Some years it feels like you are out there constantly just moving snow all the time. You are probably going to need snow tires. Depending on how much you drive, snow tires are recommended. I mean you can get by without snow tires. I did for years driving on all seasons but about 10 years ago I bought a set of snow tires and I'll tell you what a huge difference it makes driving around in the snow with a set of snow tires on. One negative about having a set of snow tires is you have an extra set of tires taking up space in your garage. You either have summer tires sitting in there in the winter or you have winter tires taking up space in there in the summer. With all this snow sometimes the school buses get cancelled and the kids get a snow day. Con number two, property taxes. I'll tell you straight up, Barrie has high property taxes. The annual property taxes on an average price detached property in Barrie are around four to five thousand dollars a year and as I mentioned earlier the average price is around eight hundred thousand dollars but in Toronto where the average price detached property will cost you around 1.7 million dollars the property taxes on that house are still four to five thousand dollars even though that house in Toronto costs you twice as much to buy I think it is because of the higher density population down there in Toronto more people per square kilometer to pay for city services con number three traffic Traffic in certain areas can be really bad at times. We have two main shopping areas in Barrie and both of them can get heavily congested. One of them is in the north end of the city and the other one is in the south end. Maple Leaf Drive is the biggest shopping area in Barrie and it's in the south end. It's where all the big box stores are. The Walmart, Home Depot, Costco, Canadian Tire. Then you have Park Place on the east side of the highway. Maple Leaf Drive runs underneath Highway 400 using a massive 9 or 10 lane bridge. Bayfield Street is in the north end of the city. This is the older shopping area in the city and it's where the indoor malls are located. Bayfield Mall, Georgian Mall, and the Kozlov Center. It used to be the main shopping area in the city until Maple Leaf Drive started to be developed around 25, 30 years ago. Back in the 1970s and 80s, you couldn't move on Bayfield Street on a Saturday afternoon. Highway 400 is the major north-south thoroughfare through the city and is usually a great way to get from one end of the city to the other. It gets really busy northbound on Friday afternoon because of all the cottagers heading from Toronto or down south of here up through Barrie up Highway 400 to Cottage Country and then Sunday afternoon they all head back down to the city so southbound is usually a stop and go on a Sunday afternoon. So if Highway 400 is busy you can just make your way through the city on the regular city streets. It may take you a little bit longer but at least you won't be stuck in the traffic on Highway 400. Like most cities we do get rush hour during the week in the morning and then again in the afternoon. Con number four, you will need a car. In bigger cities you can rely on public transit to get around but in Barrie not so much. The transit system in Barrie is not the greatest but the city is constantly working on it trying to make it better for the riders. Barrie is a low density city spread out and built on urban sprawl. 
you pretty much have to drive everywhere. If you are used to a transit type lifestyle, taking the bus everywhere, you're probably going to have to make some adjustments when you move to Barrie. Unless you have teenagers, they can just walk or take the bus. So there you have some of the pros and cons of living in Barrie. If you want to find out more about the cost of living in Barrie, check out my video, How Much Does It Cost to Live in Barrie, Ontario? And don't forget to subscribe.